What's going on guys? So in today's video, we're gonna talk about pin boxes on fifth wheels and why some pin boxes are preferred over others and really what the purpose of having a certain type of pin box might be on different types of fifth wheels. This is going to be interesting because there are a lot of questions surrounding why LCI who produces 99% of the fifth wheel frames on the market, why they only allow certain manufacturers or certain approved products to work on their fifth wheels. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so in front of me, you're looking at the new Rhino box. This is actually attached to an RV with the new Rhino frame. Basically, the difference is this deck right here, this overhang. On the older version, they essentially had some I-beam structures that wrapped around the front and they were reinforced bracing back. On this newer one, everything's been significantly reinforced and they've moved to like this six by six boxed beam that runs across the front. It's supposed to be significantly stronger and more rigid than any previous design that they've had. And in turn, it allows them to kind of change the design up front and how the pin box can attach. But all that being said, the logic and engineering is pretty much the same. It's to minimize stress on this overhang area, right? You don't want to overstress this area because you can lead to frame or metal fatigue and possible failures of certain parts of the frame. So whenever you look at your traditional pin box, it's mounted relatively high. So whenever you connect it to a fifth wheel hitch, the leverage or that pulling force, that moment angle where it's essentially pulling and applying leverage is minimized, right? Most of the the energy is being transferred across this portion right here and it's pulling directly on the front connector or the front wings that the pin box attached to. Now let's take a look at another design. Okay, so now we're looking at another LCI product. This is a Rotaflex, and this specific product is designed to dampen the connection between the pin box and the tow vehicle. This portion right here rotates on a rubber pad right here, and whenever you hit bumps or imperfections in the road, this is gonna slightly rotate. It's not gonna have a ton of rotation here, but it's really designed to take some of those small road imperfections, some of those small movements, as well as the push-pull effect of the trailer and dampen it slightly. It's it's not going to completely eliminate the feel because you still have a big heavy fifth wheel behind you, but it can definitely reduce some of the trucking that you might feel and some of the vibration between the truck and the trailer. Now this design, again, just like any other fifth wheel design, connects at a relatively high point close to this deck close to this entire connection point. So the pulling effect is still from a pretty high position up top. Now again, let's take a look at another design. Okay, so in front of you here is the Moride rubber pin box. Another pin box design. This one's not an LCI product. This is from Moride. And this has some pretty nice innovation behind it, right? So essentially there's a rubber bushing inside of here and it allows this head assembly to move and flex back and forth. And again, this helps minimize some of the effects of trucking as well as the movement of the trailer when connected to the truck. It gives it some cushioning when it moves forward and back. It can definitely improve the towing experience. But more importantly, look at how it's mounted. It's mounted, again, very high, very close up to the actual deck assembly. And this also will minimize some of the leverage and some of the moment forces that are being applied to the front overhang of this fifth wheel. This is why this Moride product is approved for use on LCI frames. A lot of products are approved for use on LCI frames as long as there's not a question of if it's going to stress out this deck area. This overhang is the key point that they want you to focus in on. So whenever you see aftermarket hitches like the Reese Goose Box, or you look at the Gen Y Executive, or you look at the fifth wheel adapters, right? The adapter that actually connects to the bottom and converts this into a gooseneck style connection. All of those are gonna have different techniques and how they're gonna affect and change the overall amount of leverage being applied to this deck area. So LCI has done significant testing with Reese who produces the goose box and they had to go through multiple variations of the design before LCI approved it for use on their frames. There was a lot of testing that was 
was done to make sure that the hinge was in the right area. The movement of the actual ball assembly and where it was placed was also in an area that minimized the excessive amount of leverage that could be applied to the front section of the fifth wheel. So that's the reason why the goose box has gone through that process. And there was actually a partnership at one point to where LCI exclusively could offer the Reese goose box as a pin box replacement on certain fifth wheels. Again, it was all based on testing. There's not really an argument to be made that LCI has been focusing on eliminating the competition in this space simply because they allow other brands of pin boxes to be used on their fifth wheels without voiding or without potentially causing a warranty issue. Now, when you start using gooseneck adapters or when you start installing other types of hitches on that haven't gone through that same collaborative testing process, that's where the big question mark appears, right? How long is it going to work before it could potentially cause an issue with the front frame section. Now, if you look at products like the Gen Y Executive, the challenge for LCI in this space is determining if the way that torsion mechanism operates, because there's no forward to backward dampening, it's all up and down dampening. And then when it dampens, the two torsion arms are actually extending the gooseneck hitch connection further out towards the front. And that's the concern for them. In the long term, could you possibly have a frame failure because the moment angle of that extension of the gooseneck connection moving out whenever it's compressed down, is that applying excessive leverage to the deck overhang area and potentially causing a frame issue. So that's the big issue. If you look at how the Reese goose box is set up, as it compresses in, it's actually compressing backwards like this. It's compressing in a different fashion. And that might be one of the reasons why it was designed the way it is versus putting the hinge in the back and having it actually rock up like this. If you look at the goose box, it actually rocks backwards like this. The hinge is up here and it pivots this way as opposed to the hinge being up here and it pivoting this way. So again, there was a lot of engineering that went into the goose box to ensure that LCI was satisfied with how it performed with their frames. And I believe that that's the biggest issue now at this point and why the Gen Y hasn't been officially you know, certified by LCI to work with their frames. I just wanted to kind of explain that because whenever you talk about adding like a gooseneck adapter to your kingpin and it hanging down right here, well that's going to apply significantly more leverage and forces in different areas that it never really would be applied if you're using it in a traditional manner, right? You're now pulling on the actual box here in an angle in a different plane than you would be versus connecting it directly to a fifth wheel hitch in its native format. When you put that arm down here, it's almost like applying a torque wrench to it and pulling it in a different fashion. So there are definitely different forces at play and energy is being applied in a different manner. And those are all things that LCI is concerned about when they produce a frame and they want to make sure that that frame isn't going to fail prematurely, you know, over normal usage. And that's the thing to keep in mind. Frames can fail. Even if you're using a completely normal pin box that's approved by them, just because you're driving over certain conditions or through certain environments, why exacerbate that and possibly make it worse by by basically putting stress in areas of the frame that it's not normally applied and potentially causing the frame to fail under normal driving conditions. And when you're a company like LCI and you make frames for just about every manufacturer out there, it's something you have to keep your eye on. Anyways, guys, I sure hope this clears things up. Hopefully Gen Y gets their hitch approved. Hopefully they are able to go through all the testing and provide the data to LCI in a manner that checks that box and it becomes a product that can be used on their frames. But I think until all all of those testing questions have been answered. I think long term more than anything. I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.